All right, the stirring abyss. So from a game that maybe had some old god stuff in it to a game that definitely has some Cthulhu in it. This is the stirring abyss. It's not going to be a scary game, I believe. This is going to be more like um I think an RPG, I don't know. Story mode, difficulty deranged. I guess I guess that's fine. Psychotic? Yeah, right. That's fine. Okay. That's very loud, huh? I got this, don't the worry. The coordinates brought us to an uncharted peak. A great mountain rising from the lightless depths. There you go. Shrouded in mystery. We thought we prepared for everything. God, are we stuck underwater now? Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, they're gone, so. Are we running a rescue mission? I mean, I hope you're not expecting some sort of, like, first-person horror game, because this is definitely not it. I don't know what kind of game it is. I just saw a little bit of a combat, and uh, it looked like a... Um, it looked like a little bit like XCOM. Terror from the Deep, actually. After the fall. There we are. Ah, uh, where am I? Welcome to Storing Abyss. Begin a game with one diver under your control. Your first objective is to find a way out of the cave. Move the diver by right clicking on the tile you wish to move. Uh, drivers have action points which determine how much they can accomplish during a single turn. You can spend action points to move. Smaller movements as long as you do not take other actions. Blah 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 blah. Divers normally start the turn with two action points. You can see action points as orange ovals. Uh, under the diver portrait. All right, those two. Uh, half oval is an action point currently in use for the moment. For the movement. All right. Right click. There you go. Can I? Oh no. Okay. Ah, we are Commodore the Han. Right. Control the camera by moving the mouse to the screen edges or by holding the middle mouse and dragging. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, no, the edges is probably better. What's that? Investigate the object. Do it. Come on, the Han swears under his breath. A corpse. Of all the caves in the ocean, there is a corpse in this one. That can't be a good omen. Though the uniform is old and the years have taken the toll, it is clear that the deceased sailor was an extremely high rank. Not a man who would be unceremoniously buried at sea under normal circumstances. Mutiny, perhaps? Or battle? There are no answers here. All the Han knows is that he would rather avoid suffering whatever gruesome fate claimed the man. Lowering his head in respect for a fellow sailor, he moves on. Alright. Uh... What's that? I think that sack is from the Salem. Should check it out. A US Navy sack. Eldritch activity? What, what do you mean, Eldritch activity? You found your first item, a spear gun. 
Lovers can normally carry two items at a time. Take the spear gun with your right with you by right clicking it. Okay. Most items cost action point to use. The spear gun, for example, costs a minimum of one action point and uses all up all extra points for increased accuracy. Loading another spear also takes one action, so plan your actions carefully. Alright. Uh I don't like that Eldritch activity. Oh! What's that? An unknown creature. Whoa, that's a big jellyfish. We can get around it somehow. Yeah, right. Eldritch activity. That's another dead person. Lost and found. Navigating the gloomy cavern, Commodore de Han comes to an abrupt stop. A motionless figure lays hunched against a rock wall, clad in one of the expedition diving suits. He is not alone. Rushing to the side of his fallen comrade, the Han is relieved to see a small burst of bubbles escaping the exhaust vent of the suit. Out cold, perhaps, but breathing. This is Commodore de Han. Can you hear me, son? He can only hope the radio transceivers on both suits are still functional. The moment of silence feels immeasurably long until a faint reply echoes inside his helmet. I'm here. Copy, I mean. It's Petty Officer Montgomery. Groggy and confused, just as he himself was upcoming to. What's going on? Where am I? Not a lot of answers as of yet, Petty Officer, the Han replies, forcing calmness and confidence into his voice. Get up and check your gear. We have a lot to do. Alright. So what's the plan? How are we getting out of this one, Commodore? I don't know. First things first. We have to find the Salem. And quickly. Yes, sir. No time to waste. Uh, you found the second member of the expedition crew and are now controlling both divers. You can switch between divers by clicking on the portrait or by clicking on the model. Your divers also have skills to help them survive the abyss. Mouse over the skill icons on the action bar to learn their function. What skills are gained as divers level up? So the Commodore has... Uh, I mean... Oh, okay, so the Commodore has Commander. It's not easy to be a leader. It gives an extra action point for another diver for three turns, including this one. Costs one action point. And this guy has Brawler. Flurry of Blades. Strike up to three different targets in melee range with blistering speed. Okay, damage reduced by 25%. Okay. Okay, so where do we go now? This guy also has morphine. Okay, Captain, that's uh Can I end the turn? Is it this one? Some characters have actions point remaining all of them to wait and end. Yeah, end. Another jellyfish. Hopefully it's not gonna... Uh, are they gonna attack me or something? Exit. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Combat. You've entered combat. To use the spear gun, click on it. Then click at the target. You can also use melee attack that costs one action point. But you will have to be next to your target. If you choose to use a spear gun, use your shot wisely. If possible, make sure nothing is blocking your view. When targeting objects or on the way, will clearly be marked. Be aware if there are friendly divers in the area, you may hit them. I see. Spear gun. Kill it. Wow, 30 damage. Holy shit. Reload. No, that's morphine. Don't use morphine. Uh, just move past the turn. Don't you dare. You fucker. 
Diver's knife, 16 to 20. Oh, this is gonna kill it. There you go. Easy. Inspect corpse. The broken jellyfish lies deflated at his feet. Tiny electric discharges still visible within the pale membrane. Montgomery is no expert on these creatures, but he knows they don't use electricity to hunt or defend themselves. An entirely new species of Schifozoa? 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 In a different context, this would be a great biological discovery. But right now, it's only putting him more on edge. Jellyfish is the peak of Eldritch activity for now. Which is good. Also, we found scraps. Alright. Okay. Let's move this guy. So far, so good. That's the anchor. Oh, we're here. Minus one air. Oh, we're losing air. We have air tanks. I mean, that makes sense, but, you know. Collect vital resources before leaving. Like what? Like copper. There you go. Got it. Can I leave now? Carefully ascending the sturdy anchor chain, the Han reaches the airlock contraption at the con. The mechanism opens with ease, just like in training. He can't wait to be inside and shed this damned suit. The coding tower is a mess, with miscellaneous equipment strewn haphazardly all around the small room. First things first, though, the control room. The Commodore kneels next to the hatch and pulls. The heavy steel door gives way with a tortured creak revealing an almost still surface of dark water. The ship is flooded. Panic rears its head with the Han. The Salem is their only way home, his only hope of seeing his family again, if it's too badly damaged to move, or even surface. Focus. The sub is floating, which means there's plenty of air inside it somewhere. All they need to do is pump the water out of the flooded sections and get the equipment in the control room operational. It's not going down without a fight. All right, USS Salem. Oh, look at that! We got knowledge. We got copper, which is not CU, I don't think. That's copper. And we got scraps. Okay, so this is kind of like our uh, <laughs> XCOM ship. I see. The USS Salem is your base of operation through the Stirring Abyss. As you progress through the game, you can use power and other resources to restore functionality to the Salem, for example, to unlock the ability to heal injured crew members. Right. You'll need to pump the flooded control room to access other rooms. Click the drop symbol on the room to pump it. Pumping can cost power, which replenishes during missions. You will also need some scrap and copper to repair the control room. Salem also has an inventory that contains crucial supplies, tracking items out of the inventory and into the divers' inventories to take them with you. Divers' inventories can be accessed beneath the portraits. Right, yeah, you can see what they have. Okay, so we drain the water. We choose a bunch of power. Upon entering the control room, you've recovered the resources and equipment. Three chemical stuff? Chemicals, yeah. Accept. The control room is no longer flooded. However, some of the critical systems in the room have been damaged and must be repaired. Mouse over the room to see the repair cost and click the repair icon to restore functionality. So we need five scrap and three copper, which is what we found outside. I guess that was part of the quest. Hang on. Nautical charts to launch a new mission. Enhance your crew. Hmm. The great machine comes alive slowly. Machinery still locked behind flooded sections, responding to the call of the control room. The hum and vibration of the engines brings hope, but not as much as the blinking light on the radio panel, the emergency beacon locator. Tens of diving suits, each fitted with a transmitter, are missing from the storage. Only one signal is active right now, but perhaps the others are just off range, or temporarily disabled. 
After the difficult repairs and the haunting emptiness they found on the Salem, it feels good to have a clear way forward. Much remains to be done aboard the ship. Most functions are completely offline and the rest is held together by the power of duct tape and positive thinking. To make things more difficult, the wiring manual in the control room maintenance cabinet has escaped its waterproof casing. The old girl is going to need some serious dry dock time if, when, they get home. Okay. So I don't have enough power to... Um, just one more wire. I've got the signal. We'll have to move the ship, but it's not far. The old girl can limp the distance, even in this shape. Can it move, really? Seems like a very bad idea. Okay, so in the inventory we have a med kit, shrapnel charge, and flares. Uh, so yeah, we don't have enough power for these rooms. We can use the searchlight. Use a USS Salem powerful searchlight to illuminate the target area for two turns, I guess. One power. Amplify signal. Amplify your sonar for a short period of time to gain valuable information about nearby threats. And evacuate. Right. Okay, standing order. Uh, new mission. Okay. Travel. This is kind of cool. This is kind of like XCOM. But Cthulhu, you know. Expedition lost. Find out what happened to the rest of the crew. Wow, this guy is just... The signal is coming from nearby. I don't want to be out here either. But the wa the others needs us. That was coming in three different classes. Yes, sir. Duty calls. Let's bring them home. Uh, officer... Oh, for fuck's sake. Keep an eye out for wiring manual as well. Without it, we're in real pickle. Are you guys done talking now? Can I? Okay. Uh, three different classes. Officers, crewmen, and scientists. Each class has access to different skills and different strength in combat. Crewmen are melee oriented, will often be found in thick of battle. Officers and scientists have more access to ranged support skills. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I guess I'm gonna have to send uh, that guy to the front lines, I guess. Eldritch activity. Oh, I can see something. I have a sonar, I guess. Click me. Objective air vents. Friendlies, hostage and salvage. That's pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool. So I know there's like water over there. Sorry, not water, air. I wonder though, what about... Um other things like special materials can I split them like this I don't think it's a good idea but hey I found copper and there's a supply chest there submarine skills are available at the top right and do not require diver to operate them they are used during missions to provide support Oh yeah, so I could use uh, Amplify Signal, those things. Yeah, 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 okay. Supply chest. We have another shot of morphine. Uh, some supplies and some copper. Nice. We haven't met any hostiles so far. Big fish. Big fish. Don't know, it's a bit spooky. Let me out here. Uh, 
I feel like I'm gonna find like enemies soon. Elvish activity. Captain, I want you to come back. Oh, hang on, there's another way up there? Okay, let me... Let me see if we can uh, join the characters together. The searchlight submarine skill and the flares can be used to scout ahead into the fog of war. Right. Unlock two submarine skills that will help you. Sonar shows the direction of the current objective nearby air vents. Using the submarine skill to amplify the sonar signal will cause the sonar to highlight potential threats. You can convert a pattern sequencer onto the Salem also to see nearby salvage. The search that can be used to temporarily reveal an area, All right? So amplify the signal, I guess. Oh shit, that's a lot of enemies. Oh yeah, there's the jellies. Ah uh, crap. Back up, back up. I don't have a lot of air, so I actually don't know if I can back up that much. Can I? Oh, I cannot. Oh, frick. Hang on, that's actually perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna shoot that one. And I'm good. And I'm gonna move this guy right here. And then I'm gonna unleash my flurry. Oh my god. Good job, Officer Montgomery. Petty Officer Montgomery. Oh fuck, there was another one. <gasps> There's two more. Oh my god, there's way more. Reload. Kill. Shit. That was uh that was bad. I do very poor damage in melee. Ow. I, they're killing my captain. There's a third one. What the shit? There's way too many. Take the tractor stance, shielding vital organs and one of our parts grants the character temporary damage shield of up to 20 damage. Right. Kill this guy. Okay. Kill that guy. Alright. Attack that one too. Missed. Fuck. Ow! Get wrecked. You couldn't have done that. Open a personal sheet uh, to see detailed info by clicking on the portal to pressing C. Right. All of your divers is running low on air. When the divers have seen less turns of air, and blah, 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 hypoxia. All right, we need to find some air. You can refill an air by using an air tank or finding an air vent. All right. What do we find? An air vent. Who's low on oxygen? All of, all of them. Okay, that's not good. I see where the air vent is. I just need to get there. Oh man, it's actually down there. I don't know if it's connected. Oh fuck. That's the only air vent around? Are you kidding me? I have to run back. I mean, definitely not ideal, but we need to get to their air vent. Okay. Oh, that's an air vent. Okay, that's a big. That's that's a big one. But there is something there. An unknown creature for five health, which I am going to shoot with my. My harpoon gun. There you go. Okay. Okay, Captain. Refill your oxygen. 
plus five. Get a little bit more. Splayed open, all that remains of the once bulging pod are the shreds of a thin but tough shell strung between supporting spines. The pressure inside the bizarre coral-like husk must have been immense. A quirk of evolution previously unknown to science, or the consequence of some unnatural force. Yeah, who knows, who knows. Alright, dude. Grab your air. Okay, we're good. We're, we're, we're back. What the frick is that? 40 health? Look, I don't care how deep we are. That definitely is not normal. Yeah, you think? Whatever it is, it doesn't seem fond of our lights. Enemies in Stirring Abyss each have unique strength and weaknesses. Uh, exploiting them to succeed. Choose your ashes wisely and make, sure of make use of skills and items to defeat your enemies. Oh my god. Alright, hang on. Reload. Fire. 31. Defend. Defensive posture. Yo, they can shoot? <gasps> There's another one in the darkness. All right. Petty officer, I need you to move right there. Ah, there it is. Kill that guy. Then I need you to reload. And can you shoot that guy? I mean... Got him. That was risky. But I got him. He's running away. What the fuck? Oh! Neurotoxin. What do you mean neurotoxin? Petty officer. Please. Thank you. The hell, man. The gaunt corpse is unlike anything the Han has seen before. Features common to deep sea animal mixed with a frame that is far closer to a human than he would care to admit. The size of its eyes explain why the strange beast was so averse of, to the light of the lamp. Compared to the near perfect darkness of its own, the fluorescent bulbs must have seemed like staring into the sun. The arms, weak and decrepit as they are, don't appear to see much use. The simple conclusion is that the spines the creature propelled must be its primary defense, as well as a hunting strategy. The simple clothing also implies the use of advanced tools. The hunt can't help but feel that there's more to these spine skulkers that meets the eyes. Yeah, right. There's another freaking uh, pod right there. There's a hole there, by the way. I don't know how I feel about that. Wait, is this something? Is that corpse? Vital essence. Oh, I healed. Oh, interesting. Captain? I need you to move. No action points. Oh. Let's go down here and see what's up. Right. All right. More Eldritch activity. Captain, I really need you to move up here. Kill that thing. All right. I don't know where the hell I'm going. This is such a bad idea. What the fuck am I doing? Splitting them up like this, it's bad. It's really bad. Okay, okay. I just needed to check that. I'll give skipping turns, I guess. Although air is um, gonna be a problem. But I don't. I don't. I don't really want to split. How dare you? It was following him. Motherfucker. Hang on. 
Who over here? I can see copper. <gasps> Defend yourself. Gun is reloaded. I'm gonna go grab the copper. Alright. Stay ahead. Just in case something shows up. We can shoot it. Alright, dude. Come up here. What's this? I can't reach, can I? <gasps> oh! No! What the f Ouch! I don't think I can shoot this thing. Too close. Oh, oh. Uh, Mr. Montgomery, I need you to kill that. Missed. That's not good. <gasps> Staggering roar. A minus one action point, and I got shot as well. That's not good at all. Minus one action point. That is really bad. The mental state of your crew is a vital resource. Whenever a diver is reduced to zero sanity, they lose their next turn in an episode of madness, acting uncontrollably and potentially hurting themselves or the crewmates. Uh oh. Each episode of madness also permanently reduces the maximum sanity of the diver. If it reaches zero, they become fully and irrevocably insane. I see. I need to leave, even though I'm probably gonna get attacked. Yeah, they have attack of opportunity, and I'm bleeding, but I had to. I had to move over there. It's following me, you son of a bitch. Ow. They are so fucking accurate, I actually cannot believe that. Okay, who's shooting? I will... I, I have no way of knowing. I cannot see. A shadow looms in the abyss. The corruption level has advanced. The track can be found at the bottom of your screen. The abyss grows more dangerous with each level, introducing new threats and already perilous mission. One of your drivers has been injured. They have long-lasting negative effects. I see. This could only be a fishing net. Petty Officer Montgomery shrugs. Everything's got to eat. Even antediluvian monsters. I guess so. Now, grab that fucking harpoon gun and end the thing. Oh, God. Really? Oh, my God. Ah. Three neurotoxin. I don't know what that means, but I feel like I'm dead. Oh, there's a person. I need to heal myself. There you go. Morphine. That'll do. Just wait. Captain, reload. Fire. Got it. Bloody hell. Okay. Uh, inspect that corpse. At first glance, the anatomy of the fallen brute defies all reason. The head is similar to that of an orca, with a maw of razor-sharp teeth. Smooth and rubbery skin also points towards a mammalian nature. What cruel trick of Darwinian chance resulted in an ambulatory deep-sea creature is beyond this comprehension. But the Han cannot deny that the fiend did indeed walk these desolate depths. The large bony hooks on the end of each arm look dangerous, but unwieldy. How the space has managed to dress itself in the sparse loincloth is a mystery. As are the logistic of spinning linen underwater. Perhaps this murk fiend, as it resolves to name the creature, is not a product of natural selection at all, but the loathsome result of a more pernicious process of mutation. Yes. Grab that life. Essence. 
I will investigate that object at some point. But first. Dude. Petty Officer Montgomery reaches the unmoving form of La lying prone on the thin layer of sand covering the bottom of this eerie cavern. He rushes in to check the suit. Thankfully, it appears undamaged and sealed. The facial port is fucked over, concealing the crew members within. An auspicious sign, for the helmet of a deceased diver will carry no pale covering of mist. Montgomery is anxious to find out who he has found, but that will have to wait until he can rouse them. He peers into the tenebrous dark beyond. A chill runs down his spine. But the officer Montgomery hopes that some of the questions that have plagued the survivor will finally be answered. Of course, even just recovering another one of the far too many presumed dead in the incident would be more than he could have dared to hope for. Snapping out of it, Montgomery realizes there is no time to waste. Breathing or not, the incapacitated figure may need medical attention, and his own tank is running lower with every breath. He holds his breath as he shakes the suit gently. Jesus. Second feels like hours until the other diver responds. The petty officer backs off, allowing them to come to terms with their surroundings and situation without risking a potentially dangerous collision. Soon, a crackle on the comms channel announces that the unknown crew member has activated the radio. Where am I? Can anyone hear me? Jacob chokes back tears of relief and activates his comm. Long story, but I'll say this. It's good to hear your voice, Ackers. A glimmer of hope lifts his spirit. Maybe there's hope for them yet. What happens, Ackers? Do you have any idea where you are or how you got here? Montgomery, is that you? The voice of the science officer is weak, though she is trying to... Oh, she... It's trying to mask her fear and confusion. Petty Officer Montgomery can tell the ordeal a second its toll. Akas continues. I don't know if I ever got the answers you want. It's all jumbled up. The dreams, Montgomery, the dreams. I feel like I dreamt a thousand lives, interconnected yet unique, with purposes beyond any I've known in this dreary existence, and now it's all slipping away. Montgomery gives her a moment. While the science officer was speaking, he checked the meter on their oxygen tank. Inex inexplicably, it's completely full. I don't even remember how I got in the suit. The captain was there, walking in front of me, guiding me through the weeds and ruins. We're not alone in the oppressive gloom. Shadows lurked at the edge of the lamplight, Montgomery. Shapes, not of this world. Oh dear God, why must the splendor and grace of my dreams... Where is it? Where is it? Why must the splendor and grace of my dreams fade and this horrid memory remain? She is visibly agitated now. The shaking of her arms is clearly noticeable, even with the bulk of the suit. Montgomery reaches out to grab the shoulders of the science officer, and the contact, remote as it is, appears to bring some relief to this bewildered companion. They let us pass. Onwards we continued, our destination apparently clear to Captain Ashworth. For he strode on with the determination and purpose of a man who knows his path. Without warning, the captain stopped. There were large rocks around us and a dark, yawning chasm in the silt. He turned around then. It was him, but it also wasn't. The loathsome face I saw was haunts me still, staring at me with cruel, gleaming eyes. Something moved behind me. The captain must have seen the but did nothing to stop it or warn me. I tried to pull my knife, but an impossibly strong grip pinned my arms. He just stood there. How could he just stand there? Petty Officer Montgomery sits in stunned silence for a moment. Somehow, despite all the unimaginable horrors he has witnessed in his accursed deaths, the thought of a brave Captain Ashford abandoning his crew, it is too much. His deliberation complete, Montgomery speaks with calm conviction. We have to find him. We have to find the truth. All right, mission complete. You found the rescue another mem member of the crew. Evacuate. Can't get you one inside the cave, but once you're back outside, you can set up an evac, an evac zone. All right. So what does the science officer do? A dart, making unable to make attack of opportunity. Okay, that's pretty cool. A dissolving dart that lowers the armor of targets. Okay, no healing, I guess. That works. Okay, at least they have these uh, weird weaponry. 
Okay, I think there's nothing else out here. I'm gonna have to go down and steal some uh, copper, some air. God, the captain really needs some freaking air, huh? Barely audible. Oh, what's that? Whispers surround Commodore the Han as he approaches a primitive shrine. At this moment, he might have had a chance to run away. To turn away. But reason and bravado override the instinctive response to flee. A set of red eyes flare open between the horns. The moment has passed. He is trapped. Do not fear, the voice whispers. I offer as much and ask for so little. The Han struggles. But the days of his suit is lin with lead. There is no escape from the red eyes that seem to burrow into his skull. So I can only do uh, meet the stair head on. It's a medium failure chance. Okay. Oh fuck, we're rolling dices, huh? Ooh, ooh. What's happening? In some situations, success or failure is decided by a game of fate. The difficulty of the task ahead can vary, and the different divers may be more suited to different challenges. You can choose to reroll any number of dice once per event. Click on the, each die you wish to select and click reroll. However, the cursed negative side of a die prevents rerolling. You can further improve your chances by upgrading your dice to the Enigma board. Okay. So I can reroll all these four. Plus one, plus one, plus one. That's it. I fucked up. I think we failed. Invocations. You have gained an access to invocations, ability and blessing granted by the mysterious patron of the shrine. Invocation use points shared by all divers, as well as action points. They're fully regenerated every mission. The horse of the shrine and the crimson disembodied eyes are joined by bright blue lines that form the shape of a bald's head. The voice returns, but no longer as a whisper. It roars around Commodore of the Han, deep as an ocean and inex inexorable as the tides. You have come to a dangerous place. Already you have faced my wayward children, and worse awaits. You should continue. Vestiges of my power still remain. Call to me if you require aid, and I will attempt to twist the fates in your favor. Who are you? The Hans demands. What do you want from us? There is no response. The silence of Aeons returns, leaving only a tingling at the back of his neck. Someone or something is watching. The power that surges through the shrine is too much for the Han to handle. As his will succumbs, the darkness around him seems to intensify. The sleeper stirs. We leveled up uh, our freaking crazy meter again. Okay, grab all the air and just start to leave. Alright. So we just get out of the cave now, yeah? Captain has to reload. So let's do that one. Ooh, what's this? Providence. It is not your time yet. Absorb the next damage distance from an enemy source. Invocation points. Oh, that's pretty cool. Void step. Step through a tear in time and space to appear in another nearby tile. I see. I see. We have Eldritch powers now. That's pretty cool. Okay, can I set up an evacuation zone? Like here? That's kind of like Exum. Exum? Excom. You can just set out your own evacuation zone. Which is really nice. Alright. Let's get the hell out of here. Bam. Done. Mission complete. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's very uh, excom like At the same time, it's not. Mission successful. Uh, some copper, some resources, some chemistry things. All right, all right. Kill the big boy. You've gotten enough clues to start unlocking upgrades through the Enigma board. Repair the officer's quarter next. 
Ah, to the control room to get started on improving your crew and equipment. One of your crew have earned a level up, increasing their stats and unlocking new abilities. Levels are awarded after each mission. You can see which level have leveled up by a flashing icon. All right. Uh, the tired crew returns to the control room of the Salem, having shed the diving suits. As they descend the ladder, a meek voice calls out from beneath. Uh, welcome back, guys. Standing near the control is Matthew Steele. Steely? Steele. One of the ship's cooks. Oh, a cook. He looks haggard but alive. He continues. Sorry I didn't speak up sooner. I came to inside one of the damn storage lockers just as you were heading out, and I wasn't myself for a bit there. Oh boy, I had some strange dreams, I tell you. Steel is clearly still a bit out of it, but it's good to have another member of the expedition back. Yeah, right. Just tell me what you need done, sir. We might need you out there, Steel. It's all hands on deck. We need this one to heal the crew members. Cover supplies enables the use of the Enigma board. There you go. Upon entering the officer's quarter, you recover the resources. Of course, we need 15 scraps of metal to to fix this. I don't think we can. Instant surge of power also increases maximum power. That's not bad. Instant surge of power. Uh, recover chemicals, convertible section. Enable the using supplies to heal crew members. Right. Recover scrap metal. I wonder how many. Probably not 15, only 5. Shame. Flares. I mean, I do have one single med kit. So that's health, and that's a sanity, I guess? Yeah, sanity. It's going down for. Good old captain. So good old captain also leveled up. Level 2. He's jolly. Always looking on the bright side of death. A uh, small chance to restore a small amount of sanity for all crew members each turn. Nice. So I do a level it up. I just click one of these. So he gets a new skill perk or whatever. Weapon specialist. Eager to try a spear gun on a real target. Activate debilitating spear. Carefully aim shot that hits each target in its path, disorienting them and dealing 70 to 20 damage. Can deal critical damage as well. Or explosive expert. Uh, activate cluster shot. Fire a projectile filled with explosive, dealing 7 to 10 damage to the initial target. Then release cluster bomb attached to the spear. Then break off and deal further 30 to 36 damage to the target and to all adjacent targets. Wow, that's actually pretty powerful compared to that one for the same exact cooldown I mean it uses all action points I guess all available so you can still reload it and use it I think this is like way strong choose attribute um, plus two agility critical strike chance and melee aim yeah that's not good ranged aim and sanity Seems good. Health and melee damage. Damage reduction and defense. I guess it's going to be uh, inside for the captain. Yeah. Confirm. Bam. Captain level 2. Oh, wait. Montgomery also leveled up. What does he have? There's a spotter. Every enemy has a weakness. Expose weak spots on an enemy, decreasing their armor by 5 and defense by 10. Killing the exposed target restores one action point for the diver that, de that deals the final blow. Oh, not too shabby. What's this? Goon. Chip shot. A carefully placed blow at exposed tendons, disorienting the target for a turn and causing them to bleed for three, dealing five to eight damage. Hmm. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, armor and defense reduction may be good. At some point. I don't I don't have any way to tell right now. The bleed doesn't seem to do much damage considering he does already 50% of the basic damage. It is more accurate though. 
But I mean, the damage over time is not going to be as good. 8. I mean, that's 24 damage plus 50%. Which is about the same, I guess. Or as 2 attacks. More or less. But over time. I don't know if we want things to be alive for that long. That's the thing. I don't know if things are going to be alive for that long. Ah, it doesn't matter right now. What do we want? Health? Base melee damage and health. Yeah, that sounds good. Alright. Oh man, I'm kind of tired now. Uh, what time is it? I think we can call it here. I'm really, really sleepy, so... But yeah, this was... Um This game is really cool. Let me go to the menu. Yeah. Staring Abyss. Oh, man. So, uh, we played a bunch of spooky, scary games tonight. I think most of them were good. Uh, some hiccups, I guess. Like, the first one was way too short <laughs> to even tell if it was good or not. Um, the second one, man, I can see that can be a good game, but they need to fix a lot of things. Mostly performance and bugs. And the, the, the those sequences, you know, I never liked them. I mean, even yesterday, when we played Silver Chains, the end scene where I had to just run around, chased by the monster, picking up items. Th those are really bad uh, game moments. I feel like they break the tension a lot. Because you will never ace them the first time around. And the time... Every time you have to confront the spook directly like that, it loses instantly all the scariness because you have to fail because you will fail over and over. You will be confronted with the same monster over and over. It will lose the spook factor. It will actually ruin the pace of the game. I that's is that is something that most um, scary games do very very wrong. I think it's a bad way of um, it's just a bad way of doing it things. I mean, for what? What do you gain out of that? It's not a good sequence. If you have to do a chasing sequence, I guess it's almost better to do like a scripted one. Where you just run around a bunch of things very frantically and then you get away, you know? At least you don't die over and over. I mean, that was my main complaint, and that is the re main reason why I never liked Outlast and why I never liked Alien Isolation. I think the atmosphere of those games is absolutely great, fantastic. The moment you have to hide in a cupboard for like 10 minutes, and every time you try to get out, you fail, and the alien stabs you, uh, the, the big bad monster just kills you, like... It just loses the intensity that the game was carrying, you know? And it just becomes a chore, and you don't want to do it anymore. And you just, ah, oh, please, can we be over this bit now? That's bad. That's not something you want your players to feel in your horror game. Like, it completely breaks the tension. I don't know. Uh, Alien Isolation was such a good-looking... A game, an amazing atmosphere, a perfect recreation of, you know, the environments of Alien. But holy crap, playing that game was excruciatingly painful. I found it really, like, bad gameplay-wise. The amount of hiding that you have to do, combined with the amount of times you just randomly die because the alien decides to pop off a vent at that specific moment. And then you go through the same exact animation. Oh yeah, the alien grabs you and uh, uses his mouth mouth to stab you in the chest. Uh, whoops, you're dead. Do it again. And then you do it again. You die again. Like, third time you're already over it. The mouth mouth. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you know the mouth mouth. <laughs> it does have a mouth mouth. <laughs> no, man. Yeah, uh, that was... This was, the last few days, the second... Was it the second? 
Spooked up a spooky weekend. Yeah, it was the second. Wow. All right. I already have the next one ready. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I have a few ideas, but we'll see. Anyway, that's it for tonight. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, have a good day. Have a good night. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.